Welcome to UCLA Newsweek, August 25th, 2010. In this edition, urban planning professor Brian Taylor takes a look at traffic problems in Los Angeles. So now you have things operating right at peak capacity, and a small disruption can have big rippling effects to the system. Astronomer Eric Becklin talks about his role in developing the world's largest airborne observatory for NASA. Sophia is well placed to really observe how the stars and the gas and the dust are all working together. And in brief, cleaning up the Gulf oil spill, better medicine through art, a link between sweeteners and cancer, and how social rejection is making us sick. Brian Taylor, director of the Institute for Transportation Studies, talks about LA's traffic problem and why it got worse during President Obama's recent visit. But as you get near capacity, things become what we call very unstable. So now you have things operating right at peak capacity, and a small disruption can have big rippling effects to the system. So the president's recent uh, visits f uh, to Los Angeles for fundraisers created an enormous amount of disruption here in Los Angeles. It has the same effect if we hear about a truck jackknife on the 405 at rush hour. Suddenly, it's not just the 405 that becomes congestion, but it ripples through the entire West LA road system, and, and it seems to shut down. That's because we're operating right at capacity. If you understand that, uh, you can try and manage traffic in a way to avoid those kinds of disruptions, which means that you engage in a very kind of spot-focused way of dealing with traffic. For example, uh, freeway service patrols, where we use cameras and sensors to identify when a, when a car breaks down and move quickly to remove the car, those can have an effect of significantly re reducing congestion. But to the, the average voter or traveler, it seems like somewhat of a transparent thing that might have. They don't really see that effect. What they see are big new projects, new freeways, new rail lines, concrete and steel. That seems like the thing that ought to make a difference, when often these operational fixes don't cost a lot, but they don't stir people's hearts and minds. And because of that, we tend to not do as much of them as we might. Astronomer Eric Becklin talks about his role in developing the world's largest airborne observatory, NASA's Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, SOFIA. SOFIA is a very exciting mission that combines a 747 and a telescope. And uh, that combination uh, lets, allows us to fly into the stratosphere, and the stratosphere is about 41,000 feet or higher. Once you are into the stratosphere, the water vapor really goes down, and you really open up the infrared spectrum. Out in the galaxy, it is filled with dust. And in fact, there's so much dust uh, that if there were that much dust here at Earth, we'd only see a centimeter in front of us. But once you go to the infrared, you can see through the dust. And SOFIA, with its 2.5 meter telescope, will have the clearest view of the universe in the infrared, the far infrared. The center of our galaxy is extremely fascinating for one major reason, and that is at the very center is a massive, black hole. The black hole has four million solar masses. There is so much mass that everything is falling onto it. Uh, even the light that is around it goes in. We want to bring all the power of how to study this. And Sophia is well placed to really observe how the stars and the gas and the dust are all working together uh, going into that black hole. And now, a look at more knowledge created at UCLA. UCLA professor of environmental engineering Eric Hoke is working with actor Kevin Costner and Ocean Therapy Solutions in cleaning up the Gulf oil spill. They're employing giant centrifuges spinning two concentric cylinders in opposite directions to separate the oil from the water. Scientists at UCLA's Johnson Cancer Center now show that in addition to raising the risk of diabetes and obesity, fructose also plays a role in helping cancer cells grow and proliferate. The David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA launched a groundbreaking artists in residence program that uses art to reflect a patient's personal experience with their illness. The new doctoring program is aimed at helping medical students become more compassionate caregivers. Researchers at UCLA's Semmel Institute found that the more neural sensitivity your brain shows to social rejection, the higher your risk of inflammation that can lead to asthma, arthritis, cardiovascular disease, and a host of other ailments. For more information on these and other stories, visit newsroom.ucla.edu.